lecturer in the Department of Political Science at the Turkish German University and the Director of European Studies at SETA. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Now, we're seeing a surge now in Islamophobia since the beheading of that teacher from high-ranking politicians, including, in, including Emmanuel Macron. What are your thoughts on that? I think this is another uh, recent development. We have been, uh, we have been witnessing uh, a rise of Islamophobia, especially in Europe, but also in the West, and also globally in the last decade. And uh, now we have reached a point that the head of the states are uh, openly targeting Muslims. Uh, in the past, it was more media. And uh, also, there were some uh, legislation in the parliament that were targeting Muslims, discriminating Muslims. And uh, we know all about the headscarf ban in, the, uh, in France, Burkina ban, um, and uh, other bans uh, directed against Muslims. So I think this is a, uh, this is a trend that we see. But Recently, this has become more and more uh, radical, the, the, the uh, statements and the rhetoric against Muslims. And um, in France, I think Macron is also himself is under pressure uh, from Le Pen, uh, from a radical uh, right uh, party. And he is now competing with Le Pen. And he is trying to be more uh, far right than Le Pen in order to gain uh, what uh, uh, um, uh, right waters, and that's why I think he is using so uh, the dramatic language against uh, Muslims. Uh, but uh, at the end of today, we see that this has been the also issue in other countries of the Europe mm -hmm. that this is not the, uh, the the solution to the problem. Right. Uh, the, you cannot stop the rise of far right uh, uh, if you uh, replicate the rhetoric. Right now, we're seeing various countries react uh, with boycotting French products and protesting. Do you see this turning into a bigger movement for a problem that you mentioned Muslims across Europe uh, and the international community have faced for years on years now? We have seen this kind of provocations before, uh, you know, especially from Denmark and other countries. However, I think that we have seen that Muslim week. Uh, Macron, uh, uh, I mean, the Muslim minority in France is actually very weak uh, in terms of uh, economic power, uh, political power. Uh, Muslims are not represented in the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, in the French Parliament. Uh, there are the 10 percent of the French um, population is Muslim, but only there are only eight uh, members of Parliament who are Muslims. Uh, mm. And uh, of course, uh, Macron sees this and. Uh, targeting a big minority, but we have to see that this is not about Muslims. Islamophobia is not about Muslims. Uh, it's, a, it's a racist ideology, it's anti-Muslim racism, but at the end of the day, Muslims are targeted because they are weak. They are weak uh, minority today, but if Europe allows this kind of uh, developments to continue, uh, the, this racism will target uh, first other minorities and then uh, other, uh, other groups who are opposing okay has so what do you think need... on, on the societal issues right so what do you think needs to be done by governments around the world to stop Islamophobia oh this is a very complicated issue but first we have to acknowledge the problem we have to acknowledge that there is Islamophobia there is anti-muslim racism and the states then should develop policies to, uh, you know to, to counter this uh, development but also uh, they have to register Islamophobic incidents as a separate hate crime category uh, because most of the European city uh, states, they do not register Islamophobic incidents as a separate hate crime category, and uh, this is not represented in the statistics. And then mm. he can say, uh, where is the problem? There is no problem, uh, because there are no statistics. Uh, so first, uh, politicians, high-ranking politicians, uh, heads of states, they have to acknowledge problem, and, uh, uh, and then uh, policies have to be developed to target this problem. All right, Enes Bayraklı, thank you so much for joining us on the program here on Charity World today.